A COMBINATION OF RESEARCH AND A COURT RULING IS CHANGING THE U.S. JUSTICE SYSTEM. THE SUPREME COURT SAYS JUVENILE KILLERS CAN NO LONGER GET LIFE WITHOUT PAROLE. RESEARCHERS SAY IT'S BECAUSE THEIR BRAINS ARE NOT FULLY DEVELOPED. WELL, NEW TONIGHT, THE SCIENCE AND THE SKEPTICS. KATV NEWS WATCH HEAVEN'S CHIN DOAN REPORTS. At age 17, he went to prison for first degree murder with no chance for parole. Now 51, Dwayne Tucker is about to go free under terms set by the U.S. Supreme Court. There is a recognition by the courts that, by their very nature, adolescents and juveniles are not fully formed adults and therefore should not be considered as culpable as fully formed adults. Psychologist Kirk Newring evaluated Tucker and other men sent to prison as teenagers for murder. He says Tucker deserved to be resentenced since the Supreme Court was right to outlaw life without parole for teens convicted of murder. So while a juvenile or a young person might have the physical capabilities to engage in a homicide, a rape, a kidnapping, a very serious adult-like behavior, that doesn't mean that they engage in the same cognitive deliberative processing that an adult would have to do that same violent act. Nationwide, about 2,300 people are serving life without parole for crimes they committed as teenagers. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled life sentences without parole is cruel and unusual punishment, siding with studies suggesting the issue is brain development. The American Psychological Association finds adolescents are less likely to make responsible choices and more likely to fall for negative influences and peer pressure, all because their brains are not fully developed. I could make the argument that we could then extend juvenile into age 25. Now, I don't think many in the law enforcement or the legal communities uh, would go along with that, but that's what we see on the research. Douglas County Attorney Don Klein won't go along with that, but he does recognize the science. We're not saying they don't know the nature and quality of their actions, but we're saying there's a difference in maybe their, the way they act, and so the sentencing parameters should be different. And so, you know, I, I think the, the science has shown that there, there is a, a difference, and so that's why the law is the way it is. But others suggest eliminating automatic life without parole for those under 18 sends the wrong message. They committed murder. They need to spend their life in jail. They took someone's life. Now their life should be taken. They're still alive, but they're, they're, they're spending the rest of their life in jail, in my opinion. The new rules mean judges will have more discretion in how teenagers are prosecuted. Don Klein hopes that will lead to more positive rather than punitive results. More evaluations, more help with regards to young people. That's one of the, one of the problems we have in juvenile court is that we don't have the mental health help that we need to help young people. So I see those kind of dovetailing together. Shindone, KETV, Newswatch 7. Well, judges now have the option of giving juvenile murderers 40 years to life. For other crimes, a district judge can move a case to juvenile court.